<laughs> and the next resource you need in order to evolve your houses even more is alcohol. Booze! Hi guys, Alys here, and we are going to try Heartlands today. Uh, now, this is something that a lot of people have uh, been comparing to Pharaoh, which is an old city builder game that I was a huge fan of. Yes, I'm old enough to have played Pharaoh. Um, for the sake of full disclosure, I was talking to the developer about this game on Reddit, so he gave me a key, and uh, I just wanted to make sure you guys knew. I did get it for free. doesn't change my opinion at all. You know that I tend to speak my mind. Alright, so we're going to do the tutorial, and I've been warned that this is a really long tutorial, so we're probably going to split it into about four or so episodes just to show the basis of the game. It's still in early access, so it may have some bugs. We'll find out. Cool, we got a little pilgrim! Welcome to Hearthlands. Tutorial is designed to help you understand the basic concepts of Hearthlands and doesn't show nearly as many features as the game has. There are a lot of details that you may want to discover yourself if you played Hearthlands before. Now you'll finally learn how you're supposed to do it. So I'm guessing they probably put this out uh, before there was a tutorial for people to test. Alright, 20 steps, so this is going to be a long one. I don't even... I'm going to check the time and we're just going to try not to let this run too long. Uh, first of all, you're sitting in these people. Scroll them out to find a good empty location for your house. It's ideally be near trees and mushrooms. Buttons in the bottom left corner of the screen are a construction menu. Click the house button and the left click on the map where you want the houses to be. Twelve houses will be enough for now. If you misplaced something, you want to remove a tree, clear the area. Use the demolish tool from the construction menu to cancel building mode. Right click on an empty spot or press escape. Alright, and I did have one of my friends let me know that I need to leave a row between the houses. Now, he wouldn't tell me why, but he warned me to leave a row between the houses. <laughs> this is so cool. Um, I remember these sort of like diamond maps from uh, Warcraft 1. I used to get so excited when I was exploring and I would finally reach the edge of the map. So it looks pretty basic. Nothing too exciting. Nothing to write home about. Oh! That's exciting. It also looks like I don't want to be anywhere near it. So we're going to like find something way over here. <laughs> Alright, so I, um, I see a good amount of trees here on the other side of that evilness there. We're just going to settle down here somewhere. That's not, that looks good. That looks good. That'll be good. So we're going to start building houses. Okay, so build them like right there. Okay. And I need to leave a row between them. And I'm wondering if this does um, if this does roads. So we're definitely going to leave some space just in case there's road. Maybe that's why I was supposed to leave a space. I don't know. Alright. 12 houses. Very easy. I don't know why they're not building though. Maybe because it's paused. Alright. Road seat. Yep. It's a good thing. Most of the buildings in the game need road access to operate. Click the road button in the construction menu and make sure every house has a road adjacent to it. Um, hopefully it doesn't matter what side. Don't forget that you can delete the road with the demolish tool if you aren't happy with the placement. I don't see any way to rotate the houses, so perhaps that's not an option. Uh, I'm not sure. We're just gonna go all the way out here. Hi. Houses are accessible and connected with the road. You need to wait for some migrants to arrive. Click speed 10 one in the top left corner of the screen. Okay, basic controls, unpause the game. Okay, and I, there are eight to a house, so I want to reach 60. First, I would like to make this look pretty because I have like the world's worst OCD when it comes to like my roads and my layouts. I want everything to be a grid. My Sim City is a, a interesting thing to watch. All right. And I don't know how many more houses I'm gonna put this way, so that's why I haven't built any roads there yet. Uh, play. Play fast. Can't go to speed three to skip the time, which I've done. So where are you? Oh, there you are! Yay! Oh, so they build the house when they arrive. Cool. Nice little shacks there. All right, my little farm, my little pony. As you may have noticed, your people are complaining about the lack of food. <laughs> Whiners. If there's something that requires your attention, you will see an icon on top of the building showing which problem the building has. Every citizen requires a certain amount of food every month. If there's not enough food, your people will eventually leave your city and search for a better life. There are eight types of food in the game. Apples, turnips, honey, eggs, fish, cheese, worse than bread. Each time is a different nutri nutrition value. Apples are the worst and bread is the best. I don't know, you guys. Cheese is the best. Let me know below if you agree that cheese is the best. <laughs> Each type also has its own production change. Uh, growing turnips is one of the simplest way to get food. 
Tell that to Harvest Moon. Build three growers' lodges and connect them with a road. Build 72 turnip plots. That's crazy. Close to the lodges. Turnip planting starts in January and ends in April. Harvesting starts in May. You can also build a scarecrow to protect your crops. Otherwise, you may lose part of the harvest. Scarecrow need to be two tiles away or closer from the plot to take effect. Okay, so I'm going to have to do some convoluted thing to put the scarecrows in the middle, aren't I? Alright, we're going to extend our road because I really don't want my farm like in the middle of all that mess. We're going to go like way over here. So I need three grower lodges. Uh, no, not house. Grower lodges. One, two, three. And we're going to need 72 plots. Okay, but we are going to have to do this like a weird way. I won't make you sit here while I set it up. BRB. Alright, so the other message popped up while I was in the middle of doing this. I didn't want you guys to have to sit here while I was dealing with this craziness. I wanted to lay it out so that I could put the scarecrows within two, uh, two plots of all the uh, turnip plots so I don't lose any of my harvest. It said, uh, step five, build a storage yard and connect it with a road. Harvest two loads of turnips. So I'm going to want a storage yard just so I can keep track of uh, all my goodies here. And I'm going to go ahead and build it, I think, on the other side of the farm here, down here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go to storage and distribution and stick a storage yard right down here so that I can keep track of all my stuff. It looks like they have like a little wheelbarrow, so they should keep it themselves until then. And we're going to speed it up because they're going to plant through April, I think it said. And then they're going to harvest. And I love these little jack-o'-lantern uh, uh, scarecrows. Those are very, very cute. I actually, uh, I used to live out in the country, and one of the farmers nearby had scarecrows in his field just to be cute. Like, they don't actually do anything. But uh, he really enjoyed, like, all the kids seeing them, and there were all sorts of stories about them being haunted. It was a lot of fun. So my farmers are going here. They're just kind of continuously planting. I'm guessing when it hits May, they'll stop and they'll start harvesting because it said they will only plant for a little while. So let's see. Um, it's fully staffed. Oh, it says what it has in stock. So yeah, it has to keep a little bit. Plant, harvest turnips, grain, apples, and cotton. So you can kind of assign them if you don't want them to be uh, doing that. That's kind of cool. So you can specialize each building. Okay, oh, so May hit, so they're no longer going to be doing any kind of planting. And our people are still hungry. It said it'll start to degrade after a while. We have 96 citizens and no food. I hope they brought plenty with them, because it's been months. And we are starting to grow these nice little golden turnips over here. All right, so yeah, they turn orange, and he's going to start picking them up. Feed the world! Wouldn't that be nice? Now you need to deliver food to your houses. All goods are de delivered to your citizens by a peddler. Build a peddler's tent, which is located on the distribution tab in the construction menu. Peddlers take good from your production building or a storage yard and distribute them between your citizens. You need to connect the peddler's tent to a storage yard and to your house with a road. They're big on roads. This must be Rome. Um, peddler's tent should be, shouldn't be too far away from your houses or the peddler won't be able to reach every one of them. Okay, so we need to make him, like, semi-close. We'll just plan on if we build more houses, we'll start building them down instead of over. And we'll start turning this into, like, maybe a more commercial area here. So, um, I need to leave that one space beside it. I'm, again, I'm not sure why. Because I don't like spoilers. Um, I don't know. We'll leave ourselves a little more room. Maybe I'll put, like, another little distribution yard, storage yard there. Just in case I need it. Okay. Um, and then I will put my peddler here. That gives them lots and lots of space to put everything like between the two. Once food has been delivered to a house, the house evolves to the next level and is able to hold more people. It usually takes up to one month for a house to evolve. By evolving your houses, you create more room for people. Migrants will arrive to those houses and increase your population. Okay, I really, really like this aspect of the game because there are a lot of these where you're constantly demoing your houses and adding new ones, or you just have like these really ghetto areas and then these really lavish houses in other areas. So it's cool that they will automatically sort of upgrade themselves. Even if you had to manually upgrade them, it's nice to be able to work with your existing plot. All right, and it wants me to go ahead and evolve the 12 houses, so we're gonna speed this up and uh, deliver turnips to everybody. Although it looks like he's delivering bread, isn't it? Oh, I guess it's maybe it's a package. Got our little courier here, our little peddler, over giving it to everybody. Oh, what are you? This house cannot evolve until a peddler delivers some alcohol. Woohoo! I won't sing my song, but uh, <laughs> I totally agree. Totally necessary. Time to cook. 
After food has been taken care of, it's time to think about health. Plague can happen if your people don't get enough medicine. Oh, no. To produce medicine, build an herbalist shop near some mushrooms. We have mushrooms. Um, you also need logs. Build a woodcutter's lodge near some trees. Use mushrooms and logs as fuel. Herbalists will create one load of medicine from one load of mushrooms and one load of logs. Apothecary is needed to distribute medicine between your citizens. Make sure apothecary is close enough to your houses. Other buys. Hey, guys. Developers. Typo. <laughs> Pharmacists may not be able to reach every house. Don't forget to connect all the buildings with the road. Woodcutter's Lodge is located under Raw Materials tab. Herbalist Shop is located under Industry. That's down here somewhere. Um, apothecary is located under Distribution. Okay, so let's pause so I can take some time to figure out how I'm going to do this. So we have, like, some trees down here. We have some trees and mushrooms down here. That would probably be a good place for it, but it's kind of far away. Um, let's start over here. We can move them down later if we need to. So we're going to build out a road down here, down to here, 25. I like things to be even, don't hate me. Um, and this for giggles, we'll connect it. There, nice, even, lock. It makes sense. You guys are going to start making fun of me for this eventually. Um, now let's start with the apothecary. Oh, it's got to be closer. It can only go 32 tiles. So we need to bring that like a little closer. I'm going to leave room in case I need another one. I know I should stop with the distribution yards, but I feel like they're going to be important. So we're going to have an apothecary there. We are going to have the herbalist shop here. Okay, so it lo this is what produces the medicine. So we can go here. Um... And then a woodcutter's lodge is going to cut down all the things. Cool. Although there's usually enough mushrooms and trees on the map, you can plant them yourself. To do that, you need to build a forester's lodge. Left click the, uh, Left -click the forester's lodge to choose what forester will plant. I think there's a lot of thes missing in there. Um, make sure to build it close enough to an herbalist shop and woodcutter's lodge. Each house consumes one load of medicine per year. You need one on herbalist shop for every 24 houses. How many houses do I have? Okay, so I'm still good right now. Um, but that may go up in the future. We'll see. Uh, so we need to plant all the things. Where's my Where's my plant? Okay. In the radius of 12 tiles. So we're going to move you over to the other side here so that you operate in this general area. And that'll be nice. Everything else will be on the other side, and it'll make sense. All right, are we good? Are we good? Does this make sense? This makes sense so far. Okay. Speed it up. And we are... Oh, God, it's already September again. So we are getting our turnips going. Everybody's still getting fed. I don't know if they'll start complaining, maybe, if they don't get fed. Possibly. Maybe. We'll see. Oh, look, there's more people coming. I hope I have enough for you. Tax level changed to low. I do not know what makes the taxes change. But you know what? Personally, that's where I would put the tax level. So it's all good. I really wish I had, like, a, a hover for a lot of these things. Like, I know what they are, but it'd be nice to get an idea, like a tooltip. In Vino Veritas. <clears throat> oh, I know what that's going to mean! <laughs> the next resource you need in order to evolve your houses even more is alcohol. Booze! <laughs> there are four types of alcohol. Mead, wine, cider, and beer, with mead providing the least number of alcohol units and beer the most. I'm a wine girl myself. Uh, <laughs> definitely, uh... Probably the easiest one is wine. In order to start wine production, you need to build a winery and 24 grape plots. Grapes are ready to be collected in September. Make sure you build grape plots close enough to the winery. You can find those buildings under alcohol tab in the construction menu. Alcohol is being delivered to the houses by a peddler, which you already have. So here's my big question. I think it's a valid one. Do I need scarecrows in my wine field? There's not really anything that lets me know, but because it's not in the actual... Um, Tooltips? Uh, Tooltips a bad word for it. Because it's not like in the description anywhere, I'm kind of assuming that I don't need it. And I hope that assumption doesn't come back to bite me in the butt later on. Um, so technically, I only need... Uh, uh, yeah. ah! OCD, I'm going to let it go. 
While grapes are growing, it's time to expand your city. Almost every building in the game requires a certain amount of workforce. If the building is understaffed, it works slower. Not everyone in your city works, though. The percentage of the population contributing to your workforce depends on the tax level and your culture. The higher the tax level, the less workers you have. Gee, that's how the real world works, too. By default, tax level is set automatically as high as possible without creating any worker shortage. You can learn more about it on the tax and employment window. Yeah, that's probably a whole other lesson in itself. If you have followed the instructions of the tutorial, you may have a little worker shortage at this point. You can get more people by evolving your houses, which will happen once you delivered alcohol, or by building additional houses. Build 12 more houses, make sure they're connected with the road to the peddler's tent and an apothecary. Alright, so this is a good place to end this one. I will go ahead and, uh, this, this is halfway through the tutorial, theoretically. So I'm going to go ahead and end it, and I'm going to get the next episode started so you guys aren't having to sit here forever just through one. I would love you to just... I would love it if you guys would subscribe so you can keep hanging out with me and I can keep sharing it with you. Tell me what you think of the game so far. It's a lot more complex than I was ready to give it credit for. I have such a problem with these games ever since they've gone to this mobile micro microtrans kind of model. I really, really think that they've gone away from their original um, intent. And I'm quite enjoying this one so far. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!